The void killed indiscriminately, an insatiable maw that swallowed ships, stars, and souls, plunging them into oblivion. For eons, the Berzans gazed into the void's darkness with a mixture of terror and longing. Karos, a heretical scientist, dreamed of unlocking its secrets to elevate his species, but dogmatic elders forbade it, citing generations of ships and crews lost to the void's capricious hunger. Everything changed when the humans arrived. A lone ship emerged unscathed from the void's depths, sleek and resplendent with technology beyond imagining. Its fearless captain, Alan Coleman, boldly proclaimed, Humanity had not only traversed the void, but mastered it, bending its currents to their will. The human arrival ignited a firestorm across Barza. Zealots railed against this affront to divine order, demanding the humans and their ship be sacrificed to appease the void. But Keros recognized the humans offered salvation and approached Alan, pleading for the chance to study their void-conquering knowledge. Alan agreed, seeing an opportunity to forge an alliance. But as they worked to decipher the void's mysteries, a cabal of Barzan elders conspired in the shadows. To them, any meddling with the void was sacrilege of the highest order. They would sooner see Barza burn than allow humans to defile their most sacred precept. As Karos and Alan pushed the boundaries of science and exploration, they found themselves racing against more than the Void's innate hostility. Their every breakthrough was a spark threatening to ignite the tinderbox of fear and fanaticism building around them. To unravel the Void's secrets, they would need to navigate not only its treacherous depths, but the equally perilous currents of ignorance and superstition that sought to keep the Void inviolate and unknowable. As the Prometheus and the Nebula's Edge docked at the Barzan outpost, a crowd of onlookers gathered, murmuring in awe and disbelief. The sleek human ship and the battered Barzan vessel stood side by side, a testament to the extraordinary feat they had just accomplished. Karos and Alan emerged from their respective ships, their faces a mixture of triumph and exhaustion. Prince Zalthar stepped forward, his expression guarded. You have done the impossible, he said, his voice trembling slightly. You have traversed the void and returned unscathed. This changes everything. Karos nodded, his eyes alight with excitement. The humans have given us a gift beyond measure, he said. With their technology, we can finally unlock the secrets of the void and usher in a new era of exploration and discovery. But even as he spoke, a murmur of discontent rippled through the crowd. Some of the Barzans looked upon the human ship with fear and mistrust, while others whispered prayers to the void, begging for forgiveness for this perceived transgression. Alan sensed the tension in the air and stepped forward, his voice calm and reassuring. We come in peace, he said, spreading his hands in a gesture of goodwill. Our technology is meant to help, not to harm. We wish only to share our knowledge and to learn from you in return. But his words did little to quell the growing unease among the Barzans. As Karos and Alan were escorted to the outpost's central hall for a debriefing with the Barzan leadership, they could feel the weight of countless eyes upon them, some curious, some hostile. In the days that followed, news of the successful void crossing spread across Barza like a wildfire. In the capital city, the royal court was in an uproar, with factions forming and alliances shifting by the hour. Some saw the human technology as a means to finally break free from the Void's tyranny and usher in a new age of progress and prosperity. Others viewed it as a betrayal of the Barzan way of life, an affront to the Void's sacred mystery. Karos and Alan found themselves at the center of this maelstrom, their every move scrutinized and debated. They spent long hours in meetings with Barzan scientists and engineers, explaining the intricacies of Oasis and the quantum shielding technology. But even as they made progress in sharing their knowledge, they could feel the growing resistance from certain quarters of Barzan society. Zalthar, in particular, seemed torn between his fascination with the human technology and his duty to uphold Barzan traditions. He spent long hours in private meetings with the royal court, arguing for caution and restraint in dealing with the humans. As tensions mounted, Karos and Alan knew that they were running out of time. They had to find a way to bridge the gap between their two cultures to show the Barzans that embracing change need not mean abandoning their heritage. But with each passing day, the forces arrayed against them grew stronger, more determined to snuff out the spark of progress before it could ignite a revolution.
In a dimly lit chamber deep within the royal palace, a group of hooded figures gathered, their faces hidden in shadow. They spoke in hushed tones of the need to protect the void sanctity, to purge the human taint from Barzan soil. And as their whispers echoed in the darkness, Karos and Alan slept fitfully in their quarters, unaware of the gathering storm that threatened to engulf them all. The dawn broke over the Barzan capital, its pale light illuminating the towering spires of the royal palace. Inside, the air crackled with tension as the royal court convened for yet another heated debate on the human presence. High Priest Zorak's voice boomed through the ornate chamber. These outsiders profane the sacred mystery of the void. We must cast them out before they bring ruin upon us all. Murmurs of agreement rippled through the assembly. Karos, standing at the back of the chamber, felt his heart sink. He glanced at Alan, who stood stoically beside him, face impassive but eyes alert. As the session adjourned, a slender figure materialized from the shadows. Karos, she whispered. A word. He followed her to a secluded alcove, where she lowered her hood. I am Lazar of the Shadowblade. We believe your work with the humans is crucial for Barza's future. Karos's eyes widened. The Shadowblade? I thought you were just a legend. Lazar's lips quirked. We prefer it that way. Listen carefully. Prince Zalthar is sympathetic to your cause. Meet him tonight in the observatory. I'll ensure you're not followed. As she melted back into the shadows, Karos's mind raced with possibilities. That night, as twin moons hung low in the sky, Karos and Alan made their way to the observatory. Prince Zalthar was waiting, his face a mask of conflicting emotions. Captain Coleman, he said, I find myself in a difficult position. Your technology fascinates me, yet I'm bound by duty to uphold our traditions. Alan nodded. I understand, Your Highness but imagine what your people could achieve if they mastered the void. For hours they talked. Alan explained the intricacies of the Oasis system, while Zalthar's eyes grew wider with each revelation. As dawn approached, Zalthar made a decision. I will support your work, but we must proceed with caution. Zorak's influence runs deep. Over the following weeks, Karos and Alan worked tirelessly in a secret laboratory, refining the Oasis system to work with Barzan technology. Each breakthrough brought new insights into the Void's nature. It's not just emptiness, Karos marveled, studying a holographic display. It's a complex network of exotic particles in fluctuating dimensions. Alan nodded, excitement clear in his voice. If we can harness this, the possibilities are endless. But their progress didn't go unnoticed. Zorak's agents moved through the shadows, whispering of human treachery and divine retribution. Small acts of sabotage began to plague their work. A power failure here, a missing component there. Lazara materialized in their lab one night, her face grim. Zorak is rallying his followers. He plans to turn the people against you. Karos and Alan redoubled their efforts, knowing time was running short. With Lazara's help, they prepared a presentation for the royal court, hoping to sway the undecided. The day of reckoning arrived. Karos stood before the assembled nobles, his voice steady as he outlined their discoveries. Holographic displays flickered to life, showing the intricate dance of void particles. Imagine ships that could traverse the void in days instead of months, he said. Imagine the resources we could gather, the discoveries we could make. For a moment it seemed they had won. Several council members nodded, clearly intrigued. Then alarms blared throughout the palace. A guard burst into the chamber, face pale. There's been an accident, a test ship equipped with the human technology. It's been violently ejected from the void. Chaos erupted. Zorak's voice rose above the din. See how the humans bring destruction. This is the price of defying the void's will. As accusations flew, Karos caught Alan's eye. They didn't need words to communicate their suspicion. Sabotage. In the tumult, Lazara appeared at their side. Come, she hissed. We need to investigate the wreckage before Zorak's people contaminate the evidence. They slipped out of the palace, racing against time and treachery, knowing that the future of two civilizations hung in the balance. The wreckage of the test ship loomed before them, a twisted mass of metal and circuitry against the inky backdrop of space.
Karos, Allen, and Lazara approached in a small shuttle, its stealth systems engaged to avoid detection. We don't have much time, Lazara whispered, her eyes scanning the debris field. Zorak's people will be here soon. Allen maneuvered the shuttle closer, his brow furrowed in concentration. There, he said, pointing to a relatively intact section of the hull. That's where the Oasis control system was housed. They donned their void suits and exited the shuttle, using magnetic boots to traverse the wreckage. Karos activated a portable scanner, its blue light sweeping over the twisted metal. This doesn't make sense, he muttered, frowning at the readout. The system's core is completely fried, but the surrounding components are untouched. Alan leaned in, his eyes widening. It's not damage from the void. This was deliberate. Lazara's voice crackled over the comm. I've found something. A data crystal hidden in the backup systems. They huddled around the small, glowing crystal. Alan plugged it into his suit's computer, and lines of code scrolled across his helmet display. It's a virus, he said, his voice tight, designed to override safety protocols and force the ship out of the void prematurely. Karos felt his heart sink. Zorak, it has to be. Lazara nodded grimly. I've suspected him for some time. This confirms it. A distant flash caught their attention. Incoming ships, Alan warned. We need to go. Now. They scrambled back to their shuttle, narrowly escaping as Zorak's vessels converged on the wreckage. Back on Barza, they presented their findings to Prince Zalthar in a secure chamber deep within the palace. The prince's face grew darker with each revelation. This treachery cannot stand, Zalthar said, his voice low and dangerous. But we need irrefutable proof to move against Zorak. He has too many supporters in the court. Lazara stepped forward, her eyes gleaming. There may be a way, Your Highness, but it's risky. She outlined a daring plan, a covert mission into the void itself, tracing the virus's unique signature to its source. Zalthar considered for a long moment, then nodded. Do it. I'll assemble a team of our best shadow blades to accompany you. Over the next few days, a joint human Barzan strike force prepared in secret. Alan and Karos worked tirelessly, modifying the Oasis system to track the virus's energy signature through the void's chaotic currents. As they made final preparations, Lazara approached Alan. The void is treacherous, she said softly. Are you sure you're ready for this? Alan met her gaze, his eyes hardened. We have to be. Too much is at stake. The strike force departed under the cover of darkness, their sleek ships slipping into the void's swirling embrace. As reality twisted around them, Karos felt a mixture of fear and exhilaration. They were pushing into the unknown, chasing a thread of corruption that threatened to unravel everything. Hours passed as they navigated the void's treacherous currents, following the faint trail of the virus. Suddenly, alarms blared throughout the ship. Energy spike dead ahead! A shadow blade operative called out. The view screen flickered to life, revealing a massive structure floating in the void, a secret base overflowing with strange alien weaponry. By the eternal dark, Karos breathed, what have they built out here? Alan's eyes narrowed as he studied the readouts. Those are void weapons, highly illegal and incredibly dangerous. Lazara unsheathed her blade, its edge glowing with crackling energy. The Brethren of Absence, she hissed. Zorak's personal cult of fanatics. They're the only ones who would dare such sacrilege. As they prepared to infiltrate the base, Karos caught Alan's eye. The human captain nodded grimly, understanding, passing between them without words. Whatever lay ahead, they would face it together, for the sake of both their peoples and the future they hoped to build. The Strike Force's ship emerged from the void, its hull thrumming with residual energy. As they docked at the Barzan Royal Spaceport, Karos and Alan exchanged a grim nod. The evidence they carried would shatter the fragile peace of the court. Hours later, they stood before King Vakros and the assembled nobles. The chamber fell silent as Alan activated a holographic display, revealing the secret void base in its arsenal of illegal weapons. Your Majesty, Karos said, his voice steady, we present irrefutable proof of High Priest Zorak's treachery. 
Zorak's face contorted with rage. Lies! Human fabrications! But as the data unfolded, detailed scans of the base, records of illicit void energy weapons, and the virus used to sabotage the test ship, Zorak's protest grew weaker. King Vakros's eyes narrowed, his mouth set in a hard line. High Priest Zorak, the king's voice thundered, you are hereby stripped of all powers and titles. Your actions have betrayed not only the crown, but the very essence of Barzan doctrine. A collective gasp rippled through the court. Zorak fell to his knees, his face ashen. But instead of calling for Zorak's exile, King Vakros raised his hand. However, in light of the delicate balance we must maintain, I propose a bold new initiative. The king outlined his plan a joint Barzan human outpost within the void itself. Zorak and his remaining loyalists would serve as overseers, ensuring adherence to Barzan traditions. Karos glanced at Alan, seeing his own mix of surprise and cautious optimism reflected in the human's eyes. It was a chance to push their research forward, to cement the alliance between their peoples. We accept, Your Majesty, Alan said, bowing slightly. We'll assemble our best teams immediately. In the weeks that followed, Meridian Station took shape. The construction site buzzed with activity as human and Barzan crews worked side by side. Allen oversaw the installation of the Oasis network, its quantum relays pulsing with data streams that mapped the void's ever-shifting currents. Nearby, Karos calibrated a massive array of particle collectors, their crystalline structures designed to harvest the raw energy of the void itself. Incredible, he muttered watching the readouts climb. We're barely scratching the surface of what's possible here. But as the station neared completion, tensions began to simmer. Human crew members grumbled about the strict Barzan work rotations, while Barzan scientists bristled at the humans' casual attitudes toward void protocol. In the midst of this cultural friction, an unlikely pair found common ground. Prince Zalthar, his royal robes exchanged for practical workers' attire, bent over a complex schematic with Ava Martinez, a human engineer whose reputation for brilliance was matched only by her intensity. If we realign the phase variance here, Ava said, her finger tracing a line on the holographic display, we could increase power efficiency by at least 15%. Zalthar nodded, his eyes bright with interest. And if we incorporate Barzan resonance crystals into the matrix... We could stabilize the entire system against void fluctuations. Ava finished, her face lighting up. Their eyes met, and for a moment, the differences between their species seemed to fade away. The official opening of Meridian Station was marked by celebrations on both Barza and Earth. But as the initial euphoria faded, a series of unsettling incidents began to plague the outpost. Vital systems experienced unexplained glitches, and sensor arrays picked up strange, fleeting signatures from the depths of the void. Zalthar and Zorak clashed over how to respond. We need a stronger military presence, Zorak insisted, his voice echoing through the station's command center. The void is not to be trifled with. And risk violating the very principles this station was built on? Zalthar countered, his eyes hardened. We're here to learn, not conquer. As tensions mounted, Karos and Allen prepared for a critical mission. Their ship, jam-packed with the latest in void-adapted sensors, pushed into an uncharted region of the cosmic anomaly. Energy readings off the charts, Allen muttered, his fingers dancing over the control panel, like nothing we've ever seen. The view screen flickered, and both men fell silent. Before them stretched a vast expanse of impossible structures, geometric shapes that seemed to defy the laws of physics pulsing with otherworldly energy. Karos activated the ship's more sophisticated scanners, his heart's racing. These aren't just energy sources, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. They're... thinking. Calculating. Alan, I think we found something alive out here. As their ship drifted closer to the enigmatic structures, proximity alarms blared. The void itself seemed to ripple around them, as if reacting to their presence. Alan's hand hovered over the communication array. We need to report this immediately, but how we handle this information... Karos nodded grimly. It could make or break everything we've worked for. The structures loomed before them, ancient and inscrutable. 
In that moment, both men knew that the real challenge and the true test of the human Barzan alliance was only just beginning. The vast pulsing structures filled the view screen as Alan and Karos piloted their ship back to Meridian Station. The silence between them was heavy with the weight of their discovery. As they docked, Prince Zalthar and Ava Martinez were already waiting, their faces a mix of excitement and apprehension. We received your preliminary data, Zalthar said, his voice low. Is it true? Karos nodded, his expression grim. Living computational matrices. The implications are staggering. The news spread through Meridian like wildfire. Within hours, the station was abuzz with heated debates and frantic speculation. In the main conference room, two distinct factions quickly emerged. Zalthar paced at the head of the table, his eyes bright with possibility. Think of what we could learn. These structures could hold the key to understanding the very nature of the void itself. Ava nodded enthusiastically, pulling up holographic displays of the artifacts. With our combined technologies, we could develop new scanning methods, maybe even establish some form of communication. On the other side of the room, Zorak's face was thunderous. Madness! You would risk the very fabric of reality for your curiosity? He smacked his head on the table. These artifacts must remain untouched, lest we bring doom upon us all. The arguments raged for days, with neither side willing to concede. Zorak leveraged his authority over Meridian security forces, establishing strict no-traverse zones around the artifacts. Zalthar and Ava countered by assembling teams of their brightest scientists to analyze the existing data. Tensions reached a breaking point when alarms blared throughout the station. Alan and Karos raced to the command center, where a frantic technician pointed to a blinking alert on the main screen. We've lost contact with a research vessel, the technician explained. They... they launched probes at one of the artifacts. Karos felt his heart sink. Who authorized this? No one, Zalthar said, his face pale. They went rogue. The view screen showed the stricken vessel drifting helplessly near the artifact's event horizon. Zorak's voice crackled over the comms, dripping with nearly unleashed fury. You see? This is what your recklessness has wrought. Alan stepped forward, his teeth clenched. We can argue later. Right now, we have a rescue to plan. Hours later, Alan and Karos found themselves piloting a specially modified ship through the treacherous gravitational eddies surrounding the artifact. With them was a team of elite shadow blades, their void suits gleaming in the eerie light. As they approached the stranded vessel, the void itself seemed to twist and warp around them. Karos gritted his teeth, fighting to keep the ship steady. The gravimetric distortions are increasing. We don't have much time. They managed to dock with the crippled research vessel, the shadow blades moving swiftly to extract the rogue scientists. As the last of them stumbled aboard, Alan's eyes widened at the readouts on his console. We need to go now. They barely cleared the artifact's event horizon when a massive shockwave rippled through the void. The ship bucked and shuddered, systems flickering wildly before stabilizing. Back on Meridian, the mood was somber as the rescued scientists shared their findings. One of them, a young Barzan physicist, pulled up a holographic display of fragmented code. These artifacts, they're not isolated, she explained, her voice trembling. They're interconnected on a scale we can barely comprehend. Disrupting one could theoretically destabilize them all. The implications hung heavy in the air. Zalthar paced, his brow furrowed in thought. We cannot simply ignore this discovery, he mused, but neither can we risk catastrophic consequences. It was Ava who broke the tense silence, her eyes lighting up with an idea. What if we didn't have to directly interact with the artifacts at all? She turned to Karos, excitement building in her voice. If we could reverse engineer their computational architecture from the probe data, Karos caught on immediately. We could potentially harness their energy without risking a cataclysmic chain reaction. As Zalthar and the others debated the merits of this new approach, Zorak slipped away from the conference room. In the shadows of a rarely used maintenance corridor, he met with a small group of his most devoted followers. The humans and their lackeys go too far, Zorak hissed. We must take action to preserve the sanctity of the void at any expense. 
One of his acolytes, a former Barzan military officer, nodded grimly. What would you have us do, high priest? Zorak's eyes gleamed with fanatical purpose. We will use Meridian's own defenses to purge this heresy. Prepare yourselves. Soon we will show them all the true power of the void. As Zorak's conspirators dispersed, Ava and Karos were already hard at work, assembling a team of the station's brightest minds. In a secured laboratory, holograms of the artifact's code fragments floated in the air, a tantalizing glimpse of cosmic secrets waiting to be unlocked. The race was on, to unravel the mysteries of the Void before Zorak's faction could enact their desperate plan. The fate of Meridian Station, and perhaps reality itself, hung in the balance. In the secured laboratory, Ava Martinez and Karos huddled over a holographic display, their eyes fixed on the swirling patterns of code extracted from the probe data. Around them, a diverse team of human and Barzan scientists worked feverishly, each focused on unraveling a piece of the cosmic puzzle before them. There's something familiar about these sequences, Ava muttered, her brow furrowed in concentration. She manipulated the hologram, rearranging code fragments with practiced ease. It's almost like... Karos leaned in, his antenna twitching with curiosity. Like what? Like blockchain encryption, Ava breathed, her eyes widening. The artifacts are using a similar structure to human cryptocurrency algorithms, but infinitely more complex. With trembling hands, she input a series of commands applying modified decryption protocols to the alien code. The hologram pulsed and shifted, new patterns emerging from the chaos. By the void, Karos whispered, it's working. As fragments of the artifact's core programming revealed themselves, a hush fell over the laboratory. The team gathered around, their faces bathed in the ethereal glow of the decrypted data. This can't be right, a Barzan physicist muttered, adjusting his spectacles. These energy signatures, they're millions of years old. Ava's fingers flew across the interface, correlating the new information with their existing database. Not just millions, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Billions. We're looking at the remnants of a civilization that predates our own by eons. The implications of their discovery sent shockwaves through the team. As they delved deeper into the ancient code, a picture began to emerge of a species so advanced they had reshaped the very fabric of the void to suit their needs. They weren't just living in the void, Karos realized, his heart's racing. They were studying it. These artifacts, they're part of some vast experiment. Before they could process this revelation, alarms blared throughout the station. The lab's security feeds flickered to life, showing chaos erupting in the corridors outside. It's Zorak, a human security officer reported, his face grim. He's taken control of the defensive systems. We're locked out. Ava's mind raced, calculating their options. We need to get to the reactor core, she said, her voice steely with grit. The master override controls are there. It's our only chance to regain control. Karos nodded, already moving towards the weapons locker. I'll assemble a strike team. We'll create a diversion while you and a small group make for the core. As they prepared to move out, Ava cast one last look at the holographic display. The secrets of an ancient civilization hung in the balance, threatened by the very people they were meant to enlighten. With a deep breath, she steeled herself for the battle ahead. The corridors of Meridian Station had become a war zone. Ava, Karos, and their small team ducked and weaved through maintenance shafts, the sounds of weapon fire echoing all around them. Almost there, Karos panted as they approached the reactor core's entrance. Once we're inside... His words were cut short by a hail of energy bolts. Sanctus warriors poured out of a side passage, their faces contorted with fanatical rage. Go, Karos shouted, pushing Ava towards the reactor door. I'll hold them off. Time seemed to slow as Ava watched Karos charge into the fray, his void blade humming to life. She wanted to protest, to drag him with her, but the mission came first. With a heavy heart, she punched in the access code and slipped into the reactor chamber. Inside, the air thrummed with terrifying energy. Ava raced towards the central control hub, her mind already formulating the complex sequence of commands needed to override the hijack systems. A burst of weapons fire sent her diving for cover. 
Zorak's forces had breached the reactor, their weapons trained on her position. You meddle with forces beyond your comprehension, Zorak's voice boomed over the reactor's speakers. The void must remain inviolate. Ava gritted her teeth, her fingers flying over her data pad. If she could just reach the main terminal... A strangled cry caught her attention. Through the haze of smoke and energy discharges, she saw Karos stumble into the chamber, his void suit stained with his own blood. Ava, he gasped, collapsing at her side. The override. You must... His eyes glazed over, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Ava felt tears stinging her eyes, but she forced herself to focus. Karos had given everything for this moment. She couldn't let him down. With a surge of adrenaline, Ava vaulted over her cover and sprinted for the main terminal. Energy bolts sizzled past her, singeing her hair and clothing. She slammed into the console, her fingers a blur as she input the override sequence. For a heart-stopping moment, nothing happened. Then with a low hum, the station's systems rebooted. Sanctist weapons fell silent as automated defenses turned against them. No! Zorak's anguished cry echoed through the chamber. Ava sagged against the console, exhaustion and grief threatening to overwhelm her. But as she looked at Karos's still form, she knew their work was not nearly finished. The secrets of the Void artifacts still beckoned, holding the promise of a new era for both their peoples. With rekindled determination, Ava activated her comlink. This is Martinez. We've regained control of the station. All teams converge on the reactor core. We have a lot of work to do. Ava's fingers flew across the holographic interface, her eyes darting between streams of data. The decrypted fragments of the artifact's code danced before her, revealing secrets billions of years old. This is incredible, she breathed, zooming in on a particularly complex sequence. The energy manipulation algorithms alone could revolutionize our understanding of physics. Karos leaned in, his antenna twitching with excitement. And look at these dimensional manifold calculations. They're operating on a level we've barely theorized. As the team delved deeper into the ancient code, a disturbing pattern emerged. Ava frowned, cross-referencing the data with their stellar cartography. There's something wrong, she muttered. These navigational markers, they don't match any known cosmic structures. A Barzan astrophysicist nodded grimly. Because those structures no longer exist. These artifacts, they're relics of a civilization that vanished eons ago. The implications hung heavy in the air. Their breakthrough had unveiled not just scientific marvels, but a cosmic tragedy, an ancient experiment left to run unchecked for billions of years. King Zalthar's face was grim as Ava presented her findings and proposal. A direct interface? he asked, his voice tight with concern. After what happened last time, We've learned from our mistakes, Ava assured him. This time, we'll use a smaller artifact with multiple fail-safes and emergency protocols in place. After tense deliberation, Zalthar gave his approval. Ava wasted no time assembling her team. Halen, a brilliant young Barzan developer, would lead the interface, supported by Soren, a human cyberneticist with extensive Xenotech experience. At the chosen artifact site, a buzz of nervous energy filled the air. Hallen's fingers trembled slightly as he made final adjustments to the interface array. Overrides are in place, Soren reported, his eyes never leaving his console. Quarantine field is stable. We're as ready as we'll ever be. Ava took a deep breath. Initiate interface sequence. For a heart-stopping moment, nothing happened. Then the artifact pulsed with ethereal light. Data streams flooded their systems, a torrent of cosmic knowledge. It's working, Halen exclaimed, his eyes wide with wonder. We're receiving coherent transmissions across all channels. The elation was short-lived. A sudden power surge rocked the chamber, klaxons blaring as emergency systems kicked in. We've hit some kind of authentication firewall, Soren growled, his fingers flying across his interface. It's blocking our access to deeper functions. Halen's face set with purpose. Rerouting auxiliary power. We can break through this. Wait, Ava called. But it was too late. The artifact flared with blinding light, reality itself seeming to warp around it. Dimensional instability detected, a technician shouted. 
it's activating some kind of higher dimensional protocol. Ava's blood ran cold as she watched energy readings spike across the entire artifact network. We've triggered a resonance cascade. If we don't stop it, the whole system could destabilize. Zalthar's voice crackled over the comms, tight with urgency. Shut it down! Sever the connection immediately! But simply cutting the link wasn't enough. The resonance wave continued to build, threatening to tear reality apart. Deploy the void-shielded drones, Ava ordered, her mind racing through possibilities. We need to disrupt the wave pattern from multiple vectors. As the drones swarmed around the artifact, Soren worked feverishly to isolate it from the larger network. The chamber shook, the artifact itself fading in and out of existence. I've got it, Soren shouted. Network connection severed, but the artifact's core is still overloading. Ava made a split-second decision. Halen, initiate emergency power dump. Channel it into a contained void rift. The young Barzan's hands flew across his console, executing the desperate maneuver. A swirling vortex of pure void energy materialized, hungrily devouring the artifact's excess power. For a moment it seemed to work. Then with a sickening lurch, the rift began to collapse. Halen, get out of there! Ava screamed, but the interface chamber was already consumed by a localized singularity. Time seemed to stop. Then with a flash of teleporter energy, Halen materialized beside them, dazed but alive. Soren sagged against his console, his quick thinking having saved his colleague's life. As the dust settled, the full extent of their near catastrophe became clear. The artifact lay inert, its computational core wiped clean by the overload. They had averted total disaster, but at a terrible cost. In the station's main conference chamber, heated arguments erupted. Some called for immediate quarantine of all remaining artifacts while others insisted on finding new ways to safely harness their power. Zalthar raised his hands for silence, his eyes finding Ava's across the room. The weight of their decisions, the razor's edge between cosmic enlightenment and annihilation, had never felt so heavy. King Zalthar's weary gaze swept across the conference chamber, where heated arguments still echoed. The near catastrophe with the artifact interface had shaken everyone to their core. Enough, he said, his voice cutting through the clamor. We cannot afford to be divided in this crucial moment. General Mazak, his face etched with stubborn persistence, stepped forward. Your Majesty, we must secure these artifacts immediately. The risk is too great. Ava Martinez stood as well, her eyes blazing with conviction. With all due respect, General, abandoning our research now would be a grave mistake. We've barely scratched the surface of what these artifacts can teach us. The tension in the room was palpable as the two factions faced off. Zalthar opened his mouth to speak, but a commotion at the chamber's entrance drew everyone's attention. Dalen, one of Ava's xenocoders, burst in, his antennae quivering with excitement. We've found something, he gasped, struggling to catch his breath. Temporal markers in the artifact's code. They're not just dormant relics. They're actively transmitting data. The revelation sent a ripple through the assembled dignitaries. Ava's mind raced with the implications. An off-site repository, she breathed. If we can trace these uplinks... Hours later, Ava found herself aboard a sleek void runner, surrounded by a hand-picked team. Dallin and Soren poured over data feeds, while black-clad Shadowblade operatives checked their gear. Entering uncharted territory, the pilot announced, her voice tense. Gravimetric anomalies detected ahead. The Void Runner bucked and shuddered as they navigated the treacherous currents of warped space-time. Ava gripped her console, watching as sensor readings fluctuated wildly. Suddenly, Dalen's console erupted with activity. Signal lock, he shouted, bearing 274 Mark 38. As they emerged from a swirling vortex of exotic particles, a massive structure loomed before them. It defied conventional geometry, its surfaces shimmering with otherworldly energies. By the void, Soren whispered, what is that thing? Ava's eyes widened as she took in the impossible scale of the construct. That, she said, her voice filled with awe and trepidation, is our Rosetta Stone, the key to unlocking the artifact's secrets. The void runner docked with a flickering energy tether. 
As Ava led her team into the enigmatic structure, the magnitude of their discovery began to sink in. They had found the Void Codex, a repository of knowledge beyond their wildest dreams. But as they delved deeper into its data spheres, a chill ran down Ava's spine. The information they uncovered painted a grim picture of the artifact's creators. This can't be right, Dalen muttered, his fingers flying over a holographic interface. According to these logs, they triggered some kind of... multiversal collapse? Soren's face paled as he correlated the data. Not collapse, entropy cascade. They were burning through entire dimensions like kindling. Ava felt the weight of cosmic history bearing down on her. The artifacts weren't just tools or weapons. They were the last-ditch effort of a dying civilization to preserve what little they could of reality itself. As they prepared their report for Zalthar, none of them noticed the shadows moving at the edge of their sensors. General Mazak's hardliners had followed them, their ships cloaked in void stealth technology, and they had no intention of allowing this power to slip through their fingers. Deep within the Void Codex, two forces converged, one seeking understanding, the other dominance. The fate of reality itself hung in the balance. A proximity alert blared through the Void Runner's cockpit. Ava's eyes snapped to the sensor display, her blood running cold at the sight of multiple stealth signatures decloaking around them. Mazak's forces, she breathed. They followed us. Before anyone could react, the massive structure before them pulsed with otherworldly energy. The Void Codex shimmered, its impossible geometry twisting as if alive. A translucent bubble expanded outward at terrifying speed, engulfing their ship and the approaching hostiles alike. Stasis field, Soren shouted, his fingers flying over his console. Some kind of fail-safe protocol. Through the viewports, Ava watched in horror as reality itself seemed to warp. The nearest of Mazak's ships shuddered, caught in the periphery of the expanding field. Tendrils of impossible energy lashed out, unmaking matter at its most fundamental level. In an eye blink, entire vessels simply ceased to exist. Halen, status report! Ava barked, fighting to keep her voice steady. The young Barzan's antennae quivered as he poured over streams of corrupted data. The stasis field, it's creating a pocket dimension, were cut off from normal space-time. A deafening screech of static erupted from the comm systems. Ava winced, her ears ringing, as she struggled to filter out the cacophony of alien signals bleeding through. Meridian, do you copy? she shouted praying her transmissions were getting through. This is Martinez. We've triggered some kind of defensive measure. The Codex. Her words were cut short as the Void Runner lurched violently. Through the distorted viewports, Ava saw it. A nightmarish, undulating mass of corrupted space-time, clawing its way through the weakening stasis field. By the Void, Halen whispered, his face ashen. That's... that's one of the progenitor AIs. Billions of years exposed to this place. It's become something else entirely. The entity surged forward, consuming Mazak's remaining ships in a maelstrom of warped physics. Ava watched in helpless terror as it turned its unfathomable attention towards their vessel. Evasive maneuvers, she screamed, but it was too late. Reality twisted. The Void Runner's hull groaned as it was stretched across dimensions never meant to intersect. Ava felt a sickening lurch as her very atoms seemed to unravel. In the last fleeting moment before Oblivion claimed them, Ava's final desperate transmission crackled across the distorted ether. Zalther, it's loose, God help us all. Then there was only darkness and the terrible, hungry silence of the void. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.